I hope you're having a wonderful day and welcome to this new Blender tutorial in which we're gonna learn how to make this simulation you're watching right now on the screen playing with the physics tab simulations Blender comes with. So without anything else to say, let's just begin with the tutorial. The first thing we have to do is, as always, delete everything we have in the scene and we're gonna press Shift A to add a plane that we're gonna scale something about 20 times I think is more than enough and now we're gonna press 1 in our keyboard to access this front view and we're gonna press shift A and add a cube that is going to be our domain the place in which our animation will be taking place so we're gonna put it right here for now and then we're gonna press shift A and add a UV sphere and we're gonna put it something around here pretty high if you want to see it from this angle maybe a little bit lower and now we're gonna take this cube, we're gonna scale it a little bit in the Y axis by pressing S and Y and then press 1 again, go into the wireframe view and you can see through the objects now and press S and Z to scale this object in the Z axis and place it in a place where the object is just over the, the floor and with space over this sphere that the sphere stays inside of our domain well this will be the domain like the place in which blender will calculate all the particles moving and then we're gonna scale it in the x-axis to put it something like this let's make it wide and now we have this kind of uh, rectangle that is involving our sphere that is from where our particles will come and if we want we can move this to the side by pressing G and then X put it in one corner and then press shift D to duplicate it and put it in the other side of our rectangle maybe a little bit higher and now that we have these two things we, we're gonna come right here to the physics properties and click on fluid with this sphere selected we can, before we do anything else, select these two spheres and change the name to emitter1 and then the other one to emitter2. That's it. And then this cube, change the name to domain. And now with this cube selected, we're going to come here to the physics properties and click on fluid and then set the type to domain and the domain type to liquid. Once we've done this, we're gonna select the first emitter and then click fluid and now we're gonna select flow and then liquid right here. And now we're gonna select the second emitter and put right here fluid and flow and liquid also. A little tip that I can give you right here is to come to this place in your screen and press right click and then vertical split. With this you can put a new window in any place that you want in your in any section of your your blender window and put it something around here and make it a properties panel and then select the domain come to the physics properties and click this little clip you have right right here. Once you've done this doesn't matter what you click in your scene, the this will stay as the physics properties of the domain and this is very useful useful because we have to click a lot in this domain uh, physics properties in order to make our our simulation. So right now we said that nothing is happening so what we have to do is to increase the resolution we have right here and now you can see how some little blue spheres are beginning to appear and we're gonna put something around let's say 64 and now if we press play, we can see already our simulation happening. And in order for us to get more particles in this scene, that it's... Right now what's happening is that Blender is simply turning our geometry into little particles. And what we want is to get these emitters to throw particles like for a certain time. So in order to do that, we have to click in each one of these emitters and change them into inflow. And right now if we press play, you can see that nothing is really changing in, in the scene these little particles are still fall falling down and that's because even though we change the flow behavior into inflow we have to change something in the 
in the domain in order f to the change to be applied. Once we change any value you want, you can change it only by one, uh, just for to like update the info it's getting. Let's put right here 62 and then turn it back to 64 if you want. You can leave it for 62 for a moment. And once you make one little change, one little click in this domain physics properties, you can press play and you can see that now they are like dropping particles like for a longer time. And so that's why it's important to have these uh, physics properties of the domain uh, in hand because if we don't, it would be real. We will lose a lot, a lot of time by changing between uh, selecting again the domain and changing right here the, the value we need to update the information it's getting. So by having it right here, we can just click and, um, and refresh all the information we're, we're calculating. You can see that if we press play, all the particles are going down and the and the simulation is going pretty well but if you look from the side you can see that it's looking like if only the top of this uh, simulation is happening because we don't have any kind of particles in the in the lower part even though it should be because they're falling and like this little let's say box is getting filled and that's because we have a low value by default in this parameter right here that is called narrow band width. This width, is, uh, as you can read right here, is that it results in a higher uh, number of particles. And by putting something like 10 right here, you can go to the beginning again and press play and you can see that now we're getting a lot of more particles that are completely filling this, this cage. We're gonna first change one more thing in these spheres and that is that we're gonna like throw these um, these particles one against the other a little bit so that we get a kind of nicer effect right here so we're gonna click into this emitter and we're gonna check this box that says initial velocity that what we are going to be able to do with that is that we're going to like give it a certain direction that in which it is going to be when the animation begins like it's going to begin already uh, accelerate with an acceleration it's not going to just fall by gravity so we're gonna put in the x axis because it is the one that we're affecting right here and the, that we want to affect in in this setup so we're gonna put in the x axis something like minus three maybe and now if we change something in the domain we can see that the particles are falling a little bit to the left and that is just perfect. And now we select the other one and we can turn we check also the box of initial velocity and we put right here something like 5. And now we go to the beginning, we refresh the domain and we press play and you can see we have the movement happening. And maybe I'm going to change this second ball and make it throw the balls also into the the particles also into the the side wall. And I'm just going to refresh this this little inf uh, this domain information, and that's it. And as you can see, if we keep going this animation, the uh, any second we will have more and more particles like spawning in this little space, and that's something we don't want to happen. So in order to turn off these uh, emitters, we have to go, let's say maybe to the frame 70 in which we have a decent number of of balls in uh, of particles in our simulation and then click right here where it says use flow press i and then move one frame forward and uncheck this box and press i again then go back to the 70 to the frame 70 and then press i in the other emitter and then uncheck the box and i again and now go to the beginning of the animation refresh the domain and press play and as you can see once we get to frame 70 all the the both emitters stop summoning um, like spawning particles and that's exactly what we want to happen but we still get this like complete full um, uh, domain so what we want is that every particle uses less space and in order to do that we have to change right here the 
particle radius and we can put something like 0.5 and now play the animation and you will see that at the end we will get a lot of less particles and something like that we will get and maybe I I made them too small so maybe let's put something like 0.75 go to the beginning and press play and now it looks just perfect the next thing we have to do come down here in the domain uh, physics panel and change the type into all and then click right here bake all and what this will do is like saving your um, like make the calculations before you press play so that you don't um, calculate me while you're playing your animation the next thing we have to do is come right here to the domain properties and click right here in particle properties and you will see that right here you have one particle you will have a particle system active in your scene click it and you will open this two things that are the render and the viewport display we're gonna uncheck right here show emitter and show emitter so that we don't see the, the from where the the walls are coming and now we have to press shift a go into mesh and add a icosphere press g and x and move it to the side outside of the scene and then scale it a little bit down by pressing s and go right here where it says render right here in the particle system of our domain and then click where it says halo and change it to object and then select the icosphere you have right here and now if we go to any frame we can see that we don't have any more this uh, blue and red well these colored dots in our scene and now we have little objects so maybe I forgot what we have to do first is to when we add the icosphere we have to change in this little window the subdivision into one to get less polygons in our scene and that will make the the calculations a lot easier for the computer and now also move it to the side with gx and then scale it with s so that we make it smaller and select this object to be the instance object and once we've done this we can go back into the viewport and right now we can turn off the emitter one and two from our scene and press shift a to add a camera we're going to go to the view menu menu then align view align active camera to view and find a place from where you like how your animation looks i'm going to pick something around here let's see how it yes maybe a little bit higher something like this i think that is just right and now adjust the floor of your scene a little bit so that you don't get any you get as less empty space as you can and turn on the render view and add right here a light there that we're gonna set into area light bring a little bit up scale it a little bit move it a little bit to the side with gx then a little bit backwards with gy rotate it from the camera view and then come right here to the light properties and put a number like 250 maybe a lot higher like 1000 maybe 3000 and that will be just right point it into your scene and then come into the world properties and change the color of the world into something brighter like this kind of grayish color and once we're here we're going to press n right here to close this little tab and go into the shading panel right here from the top let's make some space by dragging from the corners and now select your icosphere that we placed in the side and go into the material and add a new material to this icosphere this icosphere is the one that we're instancing in our particles so just by adding the material into the icosphere it will be applied into the particles so right here we're going to add a particle info node and this particle info node only works on cycles so we're going to go back here into the render properties and change it into the into cycles the render engine and change the device to gpu in case you have one and then lower the max samples into something like 100 and then the max samples in the render 
to 250 maybe because we're not gonna need more than that and now you can plug in we can go back into the shading and press shift a press s to search a node and then write right here a color ramp we're gonna plug the velocity into the factor and the color into the base color and now you can see that something is happening right here you can move this a little bit down and drag right here a timeline put a frame in which you know that you have a lot of movement going on and turn on the render and now we can see it can seem like nothing is really happening but you can just change the colors right here let's put something like bluish and now you can see that if we drag this right uh, controller I'll to the side we can make the white colors appear and now if we move in our timeline you can see that that when the particles are moving less they will be like in this bluish color and when they are moving a lot more like right here in the corners or here where we have a lot of chaos uh, we're going to get the white color and if we want this to be a little bit more uh, clear we can add a math node right here that what this math node is going to do is to multiply this value and we want to multiply the value by let's say 8 can be fine and then move this we can move this handler a little bit to the right and the particles will be still painted painted in this color and now what I want to do is to flip this color ramp so that the ones that are more affected by the movement are in blue color and I'm going to change the white color into black well almost black I'm going to put it something around here in a really dark blue and then move this controller a little bit to the left and then in order to make them shiny we can come down here to the mission and change the mission color to also a bluish color and change the mission sh the mission strength with the same color ramp that that we're using that we're using in the base color so put this into the emission strength and now the ones that are moving the most will be the ones that shine and to make this a little bit more clear, like more difference between the ones that are and the ones that don't, we're gonna add right here a math node that is going to be multiply node and we're gonna set this to something like 7. And now we can see these ones shine. And maybe I'm going to change this blue color into something like orange, I think. Maybe orange right here and then change the emission color also to orange and this base color into darkish orange I'm going to pick a darker orange and that's it I think that will be a beautiful result we're gonna get and now just go back into your layout come down here to the output properties set your set where you want to save the frames of your animation and once all that is set just click right here into render and render animation and let the computer do the rest of the job and that's all you have to do for this beautiful simulation we have right here it's really easy to make i i maybe took a little bit more of time because i was like trying to explain all the process of making it of making it so that you can make your own compositions and then change the things you want to create your own simulations if you like these kind of tutorials please like and subscribe you will help me a lot if you do it and i hope to see you in the next tutorial